ladies and gentlemen, and just especially a greeting from here mm -hmm. to all the wonderful and charming people who are here as, as guests from Bhutan. Some days ago, ladies and gentlemen, when we introduced this exhibition to the public, our friends from Bhutan kindly qualified the artist's work as divine. Not being a priest at all, I appreciate to talk about divinity, which is present in this exhibition in a very special way. But let's talk first about traveling. It's most interesting to observe that artists, for example, Menuhin, particularly enjoy this form of travel. The world's diversity of fauna originally led Roland Benz to Bhutan. A deep affinity with the land formed as a result of both his extensive periods in the country and the resulting personal relationships. The use of local materials, for example, handmade paper, influenced the individuality of his art, produced charming new effects and new motives. Roland Benz's work clearly illustrates the importance of relationships to land and people rather than the old-fashioned idea of around the world in 80 days, see Europe within five days, on or the current jet-setting lifestyle. Our exhibition today is not limited to the latest works of a world-famous artist, but also allows us a deeper insight into the traditional Bhutan tankas, which we can see here today. The monks who produce the tankas have a deeper understanding of the meaning, and Far Eastern scientists are able to read them as easily as a Western art historian understands a retable from Trecento. Who are the Tanka artists? A comparison serves a useful purpose here. Consider the book of drawings with which the parlors demonstrated their ability as painters on their travels throughout the land. The Tanka artist bases his work on exact econometric rules. Generally, he places a network of coordinates on his painting base, uses paper stencils, or works with a printing plate and painting with the illumination of the draft. The final part of the creation of the banners is a blessing from a chosen monk. Here we have religious images offering as protection and sanctuary in the divine. Naturally, the depiction is different to the holy images we are used to. Maybe we can identif identify the depiction of a Buddha or have already seen Ganesh and therefore presume to know Far Eastern art. But the content goes further than popular recognition. I do not want to be party to naive contemplation through analytic interpretations. Benz, who remains true to his love of butterflies, has extended his spectrum to include observations of local events, such as the black hat dance or an impression of the beginning of the rainy season. And of course, he returns to his preferred topic which was included in the title of his most recent book, Without Chili, You Will Die. <laughs> chili peppers are an important part of much of his work, and their bold red never fails to evoke liveliness. Development of the artist or stagnation? An artist who, was, who has found his motive and has embarked on various thanks to global impressions, we cannot ignore strong movements of 
de of development. I would, I would like to highlight two things. First, the increasingly picturesque depiction of butterflies and secondly, his serious rush national happiness. Shows us the originality of the Bhutan hand produced painting base and complements these with lines which remind us of Stone Age etchings. He progresses along the way from a story in pictures to emphasis on the spiritual and shows again himself as a completely convincing artist. Where there is a cloud, there is a prayer. The title of this exhibition showing the tankas deep sense combined with examples of respect, religion, humanity and nature. It is exactly this productive communication which the observer should not fail to recognize. Thank you for listening.